Welcome back. I'm Chris Moore with HVAC Pro Blog. And this week, I want to talk about how when you're ready to grow your business at this point in our industry, where do we find more technicians and installers? Without further ado, here's the training. All right, so this seems to be the topic du jour as the HVAC industry continues to see unprecedented growth with every level of the industry across the country looking for help. Turns out everyone was planning for some growth the last couple of years, just not at this level so soon after the pandemic. So what happens with regards to technicians and installers at this point in that equation? They certainly don't leave the industry. We can't find enough of them. It pains me to mention that I've heard some pretty astronomical hourly wages thrown around in the Northeast in efforts to coax some to leave one residential contractor for another. In particular, on Cape Cod, I heard one for $45 an hour. Of course, this may make me sound old, but I never thought a residential installer or technician could reach such a wage. But this is a great lesson in supply versus demand. Not to be too elementary here, when the labor pool is small or perceived as finite, the asking price will be as high as what someone's willing to pay to fix their pain, right? This unplanned growth leads some companies to make poor, rash decisions. About six months ago, I wrote a piece on the five toughest things about running an HVAC business. Turns out one line really struck a chord with some. Don't wait until you're so busy that you make bad decisions. Hiring anyone with experience and overpaying for someone else's baggage to leave to come to work for you. If you waited until you were scheduling installations out six weeks or more, then you may fall into this poor, rash decision-making category as finding help in June or July is probably not the best time to find the best talent. If someone is available, to steal a baseball term, designated for assignment, one should wonder what in their performance or past has them taking offers now. For the Northeast, unrestricted free agents are probably best identified and hired for the appropriate wage during the winter months, just after the holidays. I always wonder what motivates a technician or installer to leave for just a dollar hour or more. I have to believe it isn't the hourly wage, but instead this was the last hurdle for another company to pull that talent. Things like medical benefits, retirement planning, the type of work, like if you're in an attic during the hot summer or you're installing ductless, maybe on-call requirements, the company's reputation, their culture, you name it, can contribute to their decision to look around. Try your best to operate a business that doesn't give their employees a reason to leave. Make it so comfortable that to leave would be painful to them and their family, right? So what's the answer to the question, where do I find more techs and installers? I have a few options for you, but I'll require a growth plan that you have to stick to. First is referrals. An employee referral program can be organized in a multitude of ways. But what it boils down to is the old adage, horses run with horses and donkeys with other donkeys. If you have an excellent employee, knowledgeable and responsible, why not see if they have any friends in the business looking to make a move? Everyone hears how when one superstar in the NBA or NFL joins a new team, they take or make phone calls for other talent, right? Why not promote this within your company to find the right people from the start? If you have a solid team, referrals will make the hiring process much easier as I would hope your employees would only be recommending horses, not donkeys, right? In a recent study conducted by Hardy, they found that for the HVAC industry, only 7% of all applicants were for referrals, but they make up a staggering 40% of all hires. All right, next one, let's talk about pulling talent out of the trade and vocational schools. Believe it or not, the best place to find and develop new talent is straight out of school. My first job in the industry was a co-op vocational student. This meant I worked one or two weeks at a time, switching between my standard curriculum like English, math, and science, and then what became trade on the job training. Not to brag, I was top in most of my classes, but guess who got the first chance to hire the best student? The company that was serving on the advisory board that was omnipresent, offering training and equipment for the school and mentorship opportunities. When a company can develop a relationship with instructors, providing real sincere value for the trade, it is no wonder they have the inside scoop to hire the best students. On another note, the idea of mentorship is critical if we want the trade to sustain this kind of annual growth. At a local vocational school, probably the best in the state of Massachusetts, 
only 10% of the HVAC graduates actually entered the workforce. Most are pressured to pursue college degrees that they may or may not want themselves starting as early as junior year in 11th grade due to their typically high academic scores. If only our trade was omnipresent to show their counselors and their parents and the students the opportunity straight ahead of them. Instead of signing day for college and all the fanfare, why not reward the student that pursues the career out of high school? Imagine signing day, spring of senior year, when graduating HVAC students are offered full-time jobs with local companies that were mentoring them through the process instead of just pure recruitment. What the counselors typically don't tell these students is that a first year installer or technician will make 50 to as much as 100% of that of the graduating college student without losing four years and stacking up tens of thousands of debt or more. Don't get me wrong, I have a college degree, which I spent over five years in the military to subsidize, incurring lifelong injuries and still graduated with some debt while working full time as a technician and going to night school. I really wanted that piece of paper, which I like to think helped me get to where I am today, but let's be honest, I doubt it. All right, next one, always be hiring. The championship team for any professional sport never looks the same at the final whistle as it did on the first of the season. You see, managers find holes in their scheme and they work to fill them throughout each season. This can be done through their current farm team or by making trades based on their needs. Sometimes they have to say goodbye to a really talented person in order to make room for the person that fills the real hole. Yeah, it can be painful, but it's necessary to win a championship. So the message here is always be hiring. I would hope everyone working at your company are employees at will, which means they're free to leave at any time they wish and same for a manager's decision to part ways. If you are always hiring, you can work to fill the holes in your organization to meet the planned continued growth. So these three options are not going to fix your problem today, but it will certainly avoid the same problems in the future. Asking for referrals is typically an integral part of your sales process. Why not implement it for the hiring process? Today's technical school kids are tomorrow's star techs. If they are able to see and seize the opportunity, right? Finding holes in your team and filling with your current talent or looking outside your organization can be tough choices that you will be happy you made in the long run. I'm not saying all these are surefire ways to fix your current labor issue, but what I'm saying is how much effort have you given any of them? Where do you think the best employees are? Running an ad saying you're hiring could be enough, but it may just be a bit of self-centered thinking that everyone will be flocking to come to work for you if they know nothing about your company. Thanks for joining me this week at HVAC Pro Blog, where we provide advice for residential system design, quality installation, and system diagnosis. And this week, a little bit of business. I'll see you soon.